friends you are watching bhavish and i am your host ap friends today we are going to study about the phase lock loop that is the characteristic of pll so let's see the requirement for this you need three capacitor of 0.001 that is the ceramic 102 four resistor ic565 one 5k pot or you can use 10k pot signal generator dual power supply and cro so let's first see the circuit diagram so here this is the circuit diagram actually this ic has 14 pin and we have to use only 10 pin so according to that here the connection is shown so first in first part let's see the procedure and according that what is the connection so first connect the circuit as shown in the figure so here we already connected the circuit as shown in the figure okay so this is the ic here 1 2 3 capacitors 1 2 3 4 resistors and this is 10k pot now this all the dual power supply signal generator and or function generator which is also called cro okay now uh, let's see the next thing okay so in this practical two parts so first part for first part don't connect signal generator that means this circuit is also called a stable multi vibrator hence it automatically produce output so you don't need to connect the signal generator for the output so here you can say the signal generator is off and still we get here an output okay now for this output what you have to do because your resistor this this r4 is necessary in this r4 r1 is already fixed and this 10k pot is variable so what you have to do you have to first assume any particular frequency so let's first assume that uh, you want to set your frequency 50 kilohertz okay so for 50 kilohertz suppose this is 50 kilohertz and the formula to calculate this r4 and this r4 is nothing but this hole because here r this 1 kilo ohm is fixed so you need to just calculate this so let's calculate it this is r4 c1 we use the capacitor as a 0.001 microfarad so according to calculation we will get our r4 should be 5 kilo ohm so note that thing one thing this r4 is the combination of both this 1 kilo ohm resistor and this your 10k pot so how to vary it or how to adjust it so what you have to do just connect this pot and take a multimeter so stop okay now let's how to check the our resistance so first connect uh, take your uh, this dmm and the positive terminal of the dmm is across the resistors uh, that means ki here here your uh, in circuit diagram here across the resistor put positive terminal of this dmm and the negative terminal of the uh, this dmm connect another part of this means uh, your 10k pot that means here okay now you can clearly see here we already adjust, adjusted the value of uh, our uh, resistor is 4.9 kilo ohm that means is approximately 5 kilo ohm according our calculation now this is the most important thing so you should uh, remember now here uh, we connect this uh, 10k pot and what you have to do according to processor if you get adjusted a 5 kilo ohm then now switch on the power supply here we already switch on and you will observe a square wave on the cro because according to theory of this uh, ic if you provide the ac signal or uh, uh, sine wave then also you will get a square wave so better it to provide the ac signal 
we provide a uh, square wave signal. Uh, let it be later. So first of all, here you can see as we on the uh, power supply, we'll get here square wave. So let's adjust it. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, this is the our square wave output and the frequency. And if you want to see the frequency, okay. Now after switching on this power supply, you can see here this circuit produce and square wave. Now let's see the observation table according to the characteristic. So in uh, our VCO characteristic actually it's, it's called because it's an internal diagram if you want to see that uh, internal diagram is something like this this is the internal in, internal diagram so we have to take the output at the VCO okay so we are going to study the VCO characteristic so what you have to do just just changing the power supply that means this this power supply you have to change it for example suppose ki uh, from 6 volt or 7 volt okay and whatever the whatever the changing here in the uh, amplitude or uh, in time period of this waveform you have to just note down so here you can see that this uh, we change the year 6.5, 7.8, 9 and respectively 10 and we will get 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 uh, 4, 5 or 0.5 voltage and how to calculate this voltage according to this this 500 millivolt this is for the per division this 500 millivolt is for the per division if you want to see that at a 6.7 okay at 6.7 our voltage is approximate uh, is 0.246 and 6 multiply by the 500 millivolt that means 0.5 volt and 0.6 multiply by the 0.5 then it will get uh, 0.3 volt so here we, you can say that will get here 0.3 volt and according to this we can calculate the time period and you know how to calculate the time period first cycle of the wave or one complete cycle of the wave calculate here to here and multiply by this time this is the in microsecond so whatever you will get you can calculate now let's proceed ahead now this first part completed now what you have to do now according to procedure sort the pin number 4 and 5 and apply the frequency 50 kilohertz through the CRO in signal generator okay throughout the signal generator so let's sort it okay. oh. let's sort it pin number 4 and 5 so switch off switch off this yeah we have sorted pin number 4 and 5 already sorted and what you have to do just switch on uh, adjust a particular power supply for example we adjusted at uh, 10 volt because the range of this IC is uh, plus minus 6 volt to plus minus 12 volt so adjust at uh, 10 volt and now what you have to do just connect this signal generator signal generator as a part of this our uh, circuit it is connected to the here and put a square wave okay and by using this moving knob adjust this frequency at 50 kilohertz so here we already connected at pin number this and this is at ground okay now let's see the output so this here we are going to connect for the input signal whatever the signal we provide here here and grounded now here you can see okay 
now I have connected this sig uh, signal generator connection and you will see here your input signal is in the form of square wave ok now uh, let's see what we have to do in the observation table ok so in the second part what you have to do just checking the leg, uh, lock range frequency and capture range frequency so how to calculate the lock range frequency and capture range frequency ok so first we have to do by changing the signal generator input voltage so by using this knob we can change the signal generator input voltage let's see how to change it so for that you need a multimeter and plus at a 20 volt and here you can see ok it is at 2.41 now you can increase it at a 3 volt ok so as we done here so at a 3 volt now lock range for lock range what you have to do you have to just move your signal generator knob beyond your cutoff frequency for example that is the which is our 50 kilohertz and uh, below the 50 kilohertz so let's move it first and simultaneously we have to observe what whatever the changes is done going here okay so okay so let's vary the frequency and see the simultaneous here okay at uh, 70 80 you can also see the frequency shows here and at what frequency this both are the in out of phase so you can see here you have to see very quick because it's going to change okay approximately it is 84 at 84 here the phase is changing means the input and output okay so first time here we'll get uh, 90 and now what you have to do again adjust this, this at uh, 50 or here see this is 50 and go the minimum range and observe simultaneously here at what point uh, this both wave are at out of phase and you will see simultaneously observe here also here at a 21 at a 21 this both wave are in out of phase so here we will get this F minimum that means lock range for minimum is 22 and now if we minus this 90 minus 22 will get the exact locking frequency ok so simultaneously you can perform this all experiment and take the reading now for capture range what you have to do it's a very simple for capture range first use this knob for minimum ok now rotate this knob and come towards the locking range and observe here at what frequency this both input and output wave are at in phase it's uh, approximate in phase actually let's say again okay so he will see at a 41 at a 41 this both are at the in phase so here you will see this f minimum 
in first time we get at 39 so this is not a big difference now what you have to do we have to just move this knob at a maximum frequency and now again we come towards the locking range means our uh, cutoff frequency 50 kilohertz and note down where we will get both waves at in, in, in phase Now, this is the in phase, approximate 60. Okay, so again it's a 67. At a 67, this both wave are in phase. So here you will get 71. So according to it, you can perform this all experiment. And now again what we have to do now we have to change the power supply voltage and we have to take the simultaneous this all reading locking range capture range so remember one thing always according to theory your uh, capture range is smaller than your locking range okay so this capture range is always smaller than your locking range and you will see here that this locking range maximum frequency is 90 and here in capture range the maximum frequency is 71 so according to theory this both are matching that means our practical is going to be perfect and for this power supply what you have to do you have to just vary this power supply for example 7, 8, 9 and you have to perform this all procedure as previously you done okay